Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be making a card following the latest craft roulette parameters. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Friday night was the latest episode of Craft Roulette number 57, and I couldn't catch it live, but I was able to catch it later and the parameters really spoke to me, so I thought I would stop by and make a card today following those. Now my plan is to post this sometime maybe Sunday morning, and if I do get it up in time, you still have a little bit of time yourself to follow those parameters and get your card uploaded. Just like every other week, submissions are due by midnight tonight, Sunday, April 18th. But don't worry, if you can't play along this week, you can always catch this Friday's episode and then create something next weekend. I will link the episode in the description box below, and I hope that you'll go watch that. And if you haven't already subscribed to the Craft Roulette channel, I hope you'll do that as well. It is tons of fun, and now Mary goes live right here on YouTube every Friday night. This week's parameters were a sketch, pastels, rainbow, and a stencil. Now the sketch, I will try to see if I can grab a screen capture and put it up on screen now. But again, when you watch that video from Friday, you'll be able to get a nice long look at it. For my card, I am going to do a rainbow of pastel colors for my stenciled background. And for my stencils, I am actually using a three-step stencil that I created. These are six by six, and I will be able to make it so each ray is a different color. For my stamps and dies, I am using a couple sets from my favorite things. It's the balloon bouquet and party balloons. My plan is to make this card for my daughter's birthday, which is coming up this Wednesday. She will be 15 and she is ready for it. Once I start the process, I will go to a voiceover. If I add any more products or tools, I will let you know about those. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. I started today's cards by doing the stenciling on the background. I got out all my brushes so I would have one for each of my color families. And to hold my stencils in place, I got out my Misty because I like to keep my cardstock and my stencil just kind of down in that right hand corner. And I do get a little bit of help from the Misty magnet. I'm going to start by using the sun rays that do colors one and three, which will be the pink and the yellow. I'll start with the pink just with your regular blending and you do not have to have a misty to use a stencil like this. You can use tape and tape them together or if you have the pixie spray you can do that. This is just cheap, easy and free for me since I already have that misty. Once I inked the pink rays I did clean off that brush a little bit on the paper towel and I moved on to the yellow. You'll see when I remove this first stencil I have just done part of the sun ray. Next, I brought in the stencil for colors two and four, which are the orange and green. And once again, I just do one color per sun ray. And I am trying to keep it in rainbow order, but my rainbow is just a pastel. The reason that I created this particular set of stencils is I know that you can buy sun rays where you can do, you know, like one color in the center to other colors on the outside, but I wanted a template where I could do a ray or each ray in a different color. So I came up with this and I cut it on my silhouette using some material I have that's pretty similar to stencils. This final stencil is only for color number five, which will be the blue. So I ink up each of those sections and then you can see here the final results. 
While I still had my Misty out, I decided to go ahead and stamp the image and the sentiment. The first will be the image on this scrap of Strathmore Bristol Smooth, and I will be stamping it with VersaFine Onyx Black. I put the balloons on the left side of this piece just so I could trim a little bit off the right and keep that as another scrap for later. I do like to have this Strathmore Bristol Smooth for watercoloring and my zig markers, so I am pretty frugal with it. For my sentiment, I will be stamping it on this black cardstock with Versamark ink and then embossing with Detail White embossing powder. The sentiment I chose reads, you are so worth celebrating. Because stray specks of white embossing powder will be very obvious on the black cardstock, I did use my embossing buddy pretty generously on there before I inked up my stamp and then stamped it onto the cardstock. I did pour my powder on a couple times to the sediment just to make sure that it was nice and saturated. Then I brought in my heat tool to heat set that. I cut off the excess cardstock with my Fiskars little photo trimmer and I just try to eyeball a nice even border and line it up with the protective or that plastic guard on the trimmer. To color my balloon image, I will be doing some water coloring with those same inks that I used for the blending. Now, because I need a little bit bigger area than I usually do with the stamp block, I did get out my little palette, which is just a half a sheet of cardstock laminated. I placed down just a little bit of each of those five colors, and then I'll be using that water brush to water color each balloon. I started with the pink, and I colored the top center balloon, I tried to make my shadows to the left of each balloon unless they were overlapped by another color. Now because I knew that there would be a couple pinks and a couple of the oranges, I did do some counting there to figure out which balloon would be which color, and then I colored that second pink balloon. Between each of these I made sure to clean off my brush, and then I just kept this up until all of the balloons were colored. While I work on coloring the rest of the image, I thought I would stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. Now today's question isn't necessarily one that you have to answer in the comment section below, but it's more I'm going to ask you a question so I can maybe give you some more information if you didn't already know it. Today's question is, did you see the post on my community tab announcing channel memberships starting in May? If not, I hope that you'll go check it out and consider supporting my channel. If you do join as a founding member in April of 2021, I will be sending you out a special gift to commemorate that. I will be back in May with more information and details, but I do want to give you a heads up now because I have had some people ask. I will not really be changing anything with my channel. I will still be putting out content every week and sheet load as always will be free for subscribers. Members, however, will have access to what are called perks. The first of these is a visual sheet load archive that I have created where they can have a one-stop shop to download any current or past sheet load of cards files. I will put a link at the top of the description box below so you can get more information on how you can join and become a supporter of the Call Me Crafty Owl channel. Once my image was all colored in, I brought back in my little trimmer and I chopped off the right edge. Then I brought back in my big trimmer so I could cut down my stenciled piece. What I'm going to do is trim off all of the white borders on that piece and then I cut it down to my final size of four and a quarter inches wide by five and a half inches tall. But when I do that, I do want my little white circle to be more toward the left center of the card. In that original sketch, there was kind of a border behind the focal point, and for mine today, I'm using this scrap of vellum. That way I have something there, but you can still see through to the pattern behind it. I cut a shallow fishtail in the bottom, and then I cut that in half so I could spread it all the way across the back of my focal point. This just took some adhesive on the back, and I tried to center each of the pieces as best I could on the top and bottom. 
I did forget to turn on my camera while I added my sentiment strip to the image and some foam tape to the back. This is just my three quarter inch width foam tape and I'm just gonna pull that release paper and then place it onto my card front again to the left center. This piece got added to the front of a card base and it does fill that entire area. Now before I can call it done, I do need a little bit of bling or a little bit of shine. For my embellishment today, I brought in some wonderful little clear circles that a subscriber sent to me. I ended up adding five of these to the front and I think that it was a perfect touch for this card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's card. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.